land reform. It's a thorny issue here in South Africa. Everybody's worried about it. Those that don't have it want it now. Those that do have it are afraid to lose it. And government is in a corner. The question is, how will it make good on a promise made more than two decades ago to provide the have-nots with land without plunging the economy into crisis? It's a sunny day in the wide open spaces of Bronkelspreit near Pretoria, South Africa's capital city. This is the place Gift Mafuleka has called home since 2009. A dream come true for a young farmer from KZN. I was born and raised in the Zululand, KZN, in a town called Mbangeni, in the rural areas there by my late grandfather and my grandmother um, who were subsistence farmers and small-scale sugarcane um, farmers. I was raised by them because my mother used to work away uh, from, from her home when I was young. I, that's when I got inspired and that's when I picked up uh, farming as a career of choice for me. At that time, I, I was more interested on, on just farming, on just producing food at a, a more modern way because I saw their struggles and I, I wanted to improve their way of, of farming and that's when I got inspired. Government bought this land under the Land Redistribution Programme from a large-scale food manufacturer. Gift had worked this land for the company for five years after studying agriculture at college. He applied and was selected to take over a five-year lease with the option of renewal. I started farming on this farm in 2009, and in 2010 actually, because 2009 was more of getting ready to start in terms of planning our three-year journey as we saw it at that time with, with the then partners that I had approached to assist me to start this venture, I mean to start this venture of commercial farming. And uh, well, we started up with crops that were for me easy to to manage and would be easier to, to sell. And those were uh, field vegetables, your peas, um, sweet corn, uh, mainly for a processing uh, firm, which we already had an agreement with them to, um, to partner and for them to give us an opportunity to plant for them and just so that we could uh, get into, into the game of farming. CNBC Africa first met Gift when he started out. He says a lot has changed since then, including his lease for the farm being renewed for 30 years. We've changed our operations, we've changed our scale, we've changed the crops or, or reduced the crops that we 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 produce. Um, we used to plant a lot of um, small uh, blocks of vegetables intensively, and it required a lot of our time and a lot of uh, resources in terms of labor. So we cut that out and we focused on field crops, and we reduced our grain production to the size that can match r our resources terms of equipment and uh, finance that we could uh, we we can attract and the focus has been more now on on increasing yields and uh, trying to get more from the small area that we 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 have this is one of the maize fields on gifts farm white maize like this one will be bought by food processing companies to make things like pap a staple food enjoyed by many south africans here 
Unfortunately for consumers, food prices are expected to remain relatively low this year because of good rains across most parts of the country that have secured a decent crop. But Gift's success was not without struggle. As seasons changed, profits sometimes waned. When I took over this farm, it was a, it was, it was not an operational farm because it was used as a base farm to pack equipment for, for a, and do some trials. You know, I had to make this farm work, but I, uh, in doing so. I didn't know how this farm was set up from the first place, you know. I went in here taking up on the farm that had infrastructure, it had irrigation and all of but I didn't know that when they put up that center pivot, the 50 hectare center pivot, they, the intention was not to irrigate intensively. The, the intention was for supplementary irrigation. There is, uh, in, in, there is, um, a very important aspect for me to become or to become efficient in using that center pivot or, or that system. But those were just few things that I could pick up and make changes as quick as before I had to pay, start paying in on those, on, on those setups. When I took up this farm, there was a 200 kVA ESCOM power, you know, which now could cost you over 6,000 rands a month just on rental of the transformer. You know, I didn't know that, you know, you don't need such power. Whoever that was using this farm before needed that kind of power. But for me, a small enter farming enterprise, I, nev I needed perhaps a quarter of that power. Gift believes the lack of a proper handover to emerging black farmers is one of the reasons government can't count more successes under its land distribution program. In my view, it, it, it will, it, they will never be, we will never be successful as new occupants on farms for as long as the trans transactions are not business. They are just uh, land redistribution. They will never be. And then who is normally blamed? It is the same government who is the culprit. It is the, the new occupant who is a culprit. Someone who, has, who had um, um, sold the farm is smiling wherever he is or wherever she is, pocketed uh, the money and he's, he's good. And in most cases you'll find that those were businesses or those farms were in deep financial constraints in most cases, you know, and to get such cash injection to liquid, uh, liquidate your, your problem so quickly, it only benefits one, one party. He says another reason is the fact that black farmers, like him, don't own the land they farm. This makes it hard to get money from banks in times of crisis. What would make things different is freehold of land possession of title deed because if even if I, I, I had bought the farm through the bank system it would still be min, uh, difficult for me to use my property as or a portion of my property or whatever the case I don't even know how those transactions are done because I've, not, I've never been exposed to, to them as a form of security to say to take to the bank you know I know sometimes people use their livestock for such, but not all of us has livestock to use as breaching finance. Also, but as uh, in short, for as long as new uh, land occupants don't hold title deeds for their land, uh, we may just call uh, their businesses uh, in a shamble. A sign of a difficult time is that gift is often held up as a good example of land reform. Truth is, there are not enough of him. Overall, land reform in South Africa has struggled. At the birth of democracy in 1994, the government promised 30% of the land will be in black ownership by 2014. But this hasn't happened. 
Government's land audit covered 94% of the land registered at the Deeds Office. The rest is owned by the state. Government's land audit shows the majority of privately owned land is still in white hands, followed by coloreds, Indians and blacks, followed by trusts, companies and communities. It's understood that the same individuals own most of these companies, trusts and community-based organizations. Frustrations over land peaked on this ground in Soweto, the largest township in South Africa. Residents of Protea Glen tried to grab the land government had failed to deliver. These are the traces of the tires and wires burnt in protest during the land grabs. Residents tried to build shacks that look like these ones to put a roof over their own heads but police shot at residents with rubber bullets, dismantled the shacks, and returned the land to its bare state. Frustrations among residents of Protea Glen, however, still remain. The land issue is a very, very sensitive topic. It affects every South African. It doesn't matter who you are, whether you're rich or poor. But the saddest thing that I find with our government, it's been 25 years, and Speaking from what I've seen, there isn't much to brag or to take home or talk or take home. Now that the issues are on the one, obviously, what we have to do is to go to the So, obviously, we have to go to the point. Kenya is a short They do it all over the summer. Automatically, they have to go to the point. Obviously, we have to go to the point. We have to go to the point. We have to go to the point. The government has totally not um, done enough in terms of, you know, like delivering on the promises that they made, you know. It's like how many years later, 24 years or so, we're still grappling about the same issue. You know, like people are still complaining, people still don't have places to stay, um, farmers still don't have land to farm, I mean, and I'm talking about the black farmers, so definitely the government has not done enough. I understand that people don't have uh, a place to stay, ne? but coming this side, uh, want to invade a land that doesn't belong to them is a problem on its own. Uh, like we're paying bonds. So imagine if somebody comes here and put a shake, the value of the place will actually go down, you understand? So I think it's not a good thing at all. Government is starting to feel the pinch of its failures to give the people the land as elections draw nearer. After the break, we find out what government plans to do to fix its past mistakes and we also hear what experts think the best way to address land reform is. Government is now feeling the pinch of its failures on land reform as land grabs become more popular across the country. With the 2019 elections in sight, it fears it could lose votes if it doesn't get land to the people. This led the ANC government to support a motion by the right-wing EFF party to change the constitution to allow for land expropriation without compensation. This has worried landowners and foreign investors alike. But the ANC says this should be done gently without undermining food security and the economy. The party held a land summit in Johannesburg in May. It invited lawyers, business people and other land experts to the workshop to talk about how best to address land reform. The resolution of the land question in South Africa is central to the achievement of a democratic of a national democratic society. Without the redistribution of land, we will not be able to build a united South Africa. The ANC enjoys support from the people, not from traditional leaders. Some traditional leaders uh, support, you know, or pledge their support to the ANC. But the majority of them are acting as village tin pot dictators to the people there. 
And, and the people had hopes, high hopes, that the ANC will liberate them from all this uh, confines of homelands system. But clearly now, we are now the ones who are saying, no, the land must go to traditional leaders, not to the people. Whatever one wants to do about land, whatever one wants to say about land, the inevitable fact is that you can never address the land crisis by releasing state-owned land. You have to target privately owned land. The second problem is that you can't avoid the race dynamic. The fact is, as we stand here today, 72% of farmland is in white hands. You have properties in South Africa which are owned by uh, private individuals. Uh, there's one here, it's called Waterfall, no, not far from here, where the ownership is in a private individual, but uh, the people who live there have 99-year leases over the land. The banks have been able to monetize that, to make that, uh, that instrument, to finance those people. So why should it be different just because the ownership is now the state and not an individual? But the main opposition party in South Africa, the DA, believes such radical policies will do more harm. South Africans in many instances were denied land due to the discriminatory laws of the past and expropriating without compensation will ultimately mean that South Africans will become permanent tenants to the state as the state will own all the land. We believe that all South Africans must have title deeds and they must actually own their own section of South Africa. But what we cannot allow is the violation of the constitution or changes to the constitution to, desire, to disguise poor implementation by the leading party. What we cannot afford to risk is foreign investment the upmarket building of Worksmen's Attorneys, located in South Africa's richest city per square meter, is where Bulelwa Mabasa works. She is a lawyer who has dedicated most of her career to researching and debating land reform in South Africa. I've been a director for just over 10 years and um, I've been with the firm for 16 years. And out of those 16 years, I've been involved with land, I've always had a curiosity and a passion around land issues. Bulelo understands the hopes of the ANC to return the land to the people when it overcame apartheid. When the ANC took over power, the, we will remember that the section that deals with property and land is section 25 of the property. And that section in the constitution then um, was the basis on which policy was framed by the ANC, land reform policy. Land reform policy is based on three pillars, restitution, and that is basically where claimants can lodge claims with the Commission for Restitution, which is an entity that is founded in terms of that legislation, to allow claimants to submit um, claims on specific land um, they, all that the claimant has to show is that they were dispossessed, or rather their descendants were dispossessed of land after 19 June 1913, and that no compensation was paid for that land. The redistribution was really about giving people title deeds to land, which they historically didn't have. The second part of re land redistribution is around emerging black farmers, which has also been a project that hasn't quite worked as well as it should have. The third pillar is what we call 10-year um, reform. The third pillar is really about ensuring that the rights and land rights of people who work in farms or labor tenants are elevated so that they one day acquire land rights. But she also understands where it went wrong. Issues around education and health became at the forefront of what was the immediate um, you know, those were the immediate needs of the time that I think land just kind of became the stepchild, the, it, 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 it just was not um, a priority. Since 1994, government spending on health has soared 974%. The rate of increase in spending on education has followed closely, surging 835%. But the pace of spending growth on housing and communities has been a lot slower. 
it has only increased by 286% since 1994. While most people agree that land reform must happen in South Africa, where inequalities between rich and poor are the highest in the world, government is not clear on how it will improve on the failures of the past. Tokolo Njojo is one of the people who will watch closely. He is the CEO of the Land and Agricultural Development Bank, which lends billions of rands to emerging farmers. Tsukolo's interest in land reform dates back long before his appointment at the state-owned bank in 2014. I was born on a farm outside the town of Tienezen, Masilonyana, in the Free State. The owner of the farm, I'm told, was a certain Mr. Potchiter. Like Bulelwa, the lawyer at Workmen's Attorneys, Tsukolo also believes expropriation without compensation is not the quick answer to fixing the land problem. Any government can go ahead and expropriate land whichever way they want today. They can go ahead and expropriate land without compensation and so on and so on. If that program of making land available is not accompanied by appropriate planning of farm development, appropriate financing support to the sector, appropriate technical advisory services as I've indicated, appropriate marketing assistance efforts, as well as appropriate access to infrastructure such as water. I'm afraid that land availability program is likely to come to naught. He also warns it could be tricky. When you expropriate a piece of land and a bank has a mortgage bond on that land, as I've just indicated, the land bank has more than 43 billion in loans. The question is, what does government do with that debt that is owed to a bank? Uh, the, the default situation, I, believe, I, I, I think, I imagine in that situation would be that government itself, through the national treasury, would have to compensate a bank. Where does the national treasury get 160 billion rand? And I'm now assuming a worst case scenario where every piece of land is expropriated without compensation. In the second instance, the danger that lurks in this whole thing is that it means then the entire mortgage bond financing system by the banking sector, I think, would virtually collapse. Because uh, why would you lend money uh, afresh into a new environment where there is likelihood of uh, uh, expropriation uh, happening without compensation to you as a lender? Agricultural economist Wandi Lesihlobo is well respected in many corridors, including those of the ANC government who know his research well. I started off not really thinking that I would be an agriculture economist. I registered accounting at university in the first year, but somewhere towards the end of the, of the first semester, that's where I changed and I went on in agriculture economics. And what's really attractive about that, this space was the issue, obviously, of the economic side of it, the business of farming, and also just the, the, the environment, the farming as a whole. And at that time, if you look at it around about 2008 or so, that's where we were going on, on the global food crisis and all of that stuff. So there was a lot of interest within the farming sector. For Wandile, land reform cannot be successful if the land doesn't come with property rights. More broadly, you're looking at the land reform. It's very necessary in South Africa, given the historical uh, issue of the country. But where one differs the most about is the instrument on how we actually get to be there. Because you want to make sure that you do uh, land reform in a sustainable way, and the fact that those who get to benefit on the land reform one, they get to get in there in the sector and continue to drive and do well. Either it's on agriculture or just the normal uh, 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 land using on a residential and stuff. But with the policy of expropriation, there's obviously a number of key issues. But one of the key ones for me, particularly on the economic one, is around the issue of property rights because that's the intrinsic value of 
telling whether the land can be used for something of economic benefit. Can you be able to borrow uh, from the bank against the land and be able to invest and do all sorts of things? Uh, this policy seems to me as if it could undermine the property rights. He believes the lack of rights to the land is the main reason why many land reform programs in African countries like Zimbabwe have failed. Globally, there's just over 4 million hectares of land that is unused and arable for agriculture. And you find that about 45% or, 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 or close to 50% of it, or just over 200, um, is, is in sub is in Africa. And much of, of that, uh, of that 200, 45% is in sub-Saharan Africa. You will see that countries like the DRC, Congo, Sudan, and stuff, they have vast amounts of land that is unused. And even some of our neighbors, like Zambia, you find that there's just uh, north of 8 million hectares that are unused in those areas. But but when you look back to the DRC, which owns, uh, and Angola, which has abundance of, of unused land, most of those areas, land good for agriculture, but the issue gets to be on governance, on conflicts, uh, lack of title deeds or ownership on those things. So all of that is what hinders investments. Back in Bronco Sprint, the foot soldiers continue to get up in the morning to work the land. Land will be a bigger and more emotive issue, not just in South Africa, but also across the continent. In the run-up to the elections, political parties will be wielding it like a sword. It could also prove to be a fatal dagger in the back. Land expropriation without compensation, it's bad for uh, the economy, but unfortunately it's something that had, has to be done. <laughs>